so hi okay. one of the good noise podcasts with familiar spaces we're gonna ask some, some questions today i'm gonna start so what inspired you guys to start the band and what does the band name mean oh so all right so, question i feel like we'll get the band name out of the way um it doesn't mean a thing okay <laughs> interesting <laughs> okay we just needed a name and it it was the least embarrassing option so we what were some of the more embarrassing it. options though yeah. Uh, we had we had one that I thought was really cool. We were originally Wild Eyes until we found out there was like seven other bands with that name. Yeah, a lot. But we were just like, that's a Parkway Drive song, so we went with it. <sighs> okay. Okay. I don't remember band. how the band started. Yeah. Creation yeah. Like, <laughs> okay. It, I, uh, I guess like a short version would be like it sort of evolved from like other bands we were in before because like Mike and I met in high school. And we had a mutual friend that also played music. So we just like jammed with them and played like, you know, like, like kind of weird, like psychedelic rock almost for a little bit. <laughs> so yeah, we were, I don't know, we were playing weird stuff and just kind of having fun with it. And then eventually we wanted to get a little bit more serious and write songs. And like, uh, over the years, like, you know, we've tried out different sounds and ideas and approaches to it. Um, and, you know, Mike and I have, been in it since the start so yeah eventually it just kind of became familiar spaces uh when we decided like all right this sounds pretty cool and um yeah we just kind of went with it from there okay. evan and i met playing metalcore okay that was, like, wow. that was the first thing was metalcore i i honestly think most emo band members do they come yeah. from metalcore and they arrive at emo or pop punk. That does explain yes. the yeah. amount of China symbols in familiar spaces production. <laughs> well, I'm just glad that like I listened to the EP and it wasn't psychedelic rock. I would have preferred. Yeah, no, I'm also yeah. pop punk is good too. Come out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To be fair, we never wrote any music in that style. That was just like what we started with. And then the first time we started writing songs, we were like already pushing. Like it started off as kind of like just like. I guess like alternative rock and mm -hmm. then it just kind of moved into emo and then moved into what we are now okay. Solid. So okay. never got too <laughs> far with the psychedelic rock thankfully yeah that's... Oh, maybe like a maybe like a hint of a fish cover at some show someday <laughs> oh wow i could mm -hmm. i could i could live my the rest of my life never having done that <laughs> yeah that sounds good that sounds good um if shows so ever come back Ouch. Uh, so congrats on our newest release, Everyone in Search for an Exit. How do you feel about the response to that EP so far? Um, it was, like, really cool because, like, our first record is very, like, um, small um, mm -hmm. comparatively. Like, we put it out, all of our friends listened to it. That was, like, the extent of it. And we just kind of, like, played a bunch of local shows on it and mm -hmm. did, like, a weekend or two on it. Okay. Um, but this one we got super lucky in that like I think it was like two two songs got picked up for like playlists and stuff like that. Yeah, and great. like like in the open like kind of popped off from playlists, which was really cool because like we never like put it in, like we didn't submit it for any playlist. It just got picked up on um uh was it New Punk Tracks? Nice. Yeah, I think it was one of those. Wow. So we got put on that and that was really cool. Um, yeah. Yeah, that's no joke. So from from mm -hmm. there, we just kind of wrote that wave. We're not we're not really good at promoting our music, so luckily Spotify did it for us that one time. Yeah, yeah, that's Spotify good. was good for once. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, can you tell me a little bit about your writing process for the CP? Mm -hmm. uh, um, we started writing what? It it was a while back. I I don't know what year it was that we started writing, but like was it nineteen or eighteen. It was definitely 18. Yeah, it had to be at least 2018. Like, I think I think we started some of the songs, like, longer ago than others. But I, I know, like, not, not like it used to be in particular. I know, like, you had written that as an idea a while back. Um, and it went through, like, various different versions. And obviously, we had the original version we had recorded before the EP came out. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we just, like... Uh, it was like a definitely the longest uh, that we've written for something. But, we wrote um, like fifty songs or something like that, or at Jesus least 50, Christ. Like, demos and ideas. Not lyrically, I that'll oh. be a whole other thing yeah, we'll like, talk about. But, like Jesus, we wrote like wow. well because we went through like three or four different sound changes to get to okay. where we ended up oh. on the record. Like we just tried a bunch of different things to figure out what we wanted to do. 
Um, That's fair. But lyrically, I didn't write any lyrics until we were already recording the record. For outside of like one song, because I was having some serious writer's block. Actually, Evan remembers uh, we recorded in, in Canada, and our kind of our routine was like get up at nine in the morning, drive to the studio, which is right down the street from the house we were staying at, and then record till like eleven o'clock. Come home, go back to sleep, get up at nine a.m., repeat. Oh, yeah. But um. I only had like one or two songs lyrically written at the time. And so it got to the point where like the day before we tracked vocals, I stayed up till seven in the morning writing the rest of the record's lyrics in like one night. I didn't get all of it done. I did a little bit of editing while the next day while we were tracking like a couple more guitar parts, but I, I wrote all of the lyrics as up to 7 a.m. Slept wow. until 8.30 we went to the studio. Evan was tracking like leads and I was sleeping on a couch in the back of the studio. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think and then I, I want to say you spent most of that session asleep on the couch. But you just I was exhausted. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I'm never going into the studio without lyrics ever again. Yeah, I'm just going to ask, <laughs> like, do you prefer to like write in the studio or stay no, up and write no. while you're recording? But <laughs> you answered not. my question. I, I was yeah. a mess. I had I had a I had a notebook to write the lyrics and then I had a anxiety hotline chat on my phone oh. next to it. So I was talking to a therapist while writing the lyrics. Oh no. <laughs> and I'm never doing that again. Yeah, yeah. We we came we very, very quickly came to that agreement of like, hey, listen, like, let's never ever book studio time without mm -hmm. having all of the lyrics already written because it's like if you go into the studio and you want to change a lyric that's fine but yeah. we went into the studio not having lyrics for a majority of the songs and like mm -hmm. our original mindset was like oh well like our friends in this band went to the studio with only half of their songs written and their record's great and then we oh. did it and we're like we can't do this yeah but the, the, <laughs> the person who writes work. the lyrics in that band is a much more capable lyricist than I was. <laughs> so but the it, as difficult as it was it was a really important learning experience so we will we will never go to the studio never again we also band, yeah. two songs were technically written in the studio like we had um the structures for two of them but they pretty much got entirely reworked in the open and the title track were both completely reworked in the studio and are nothing like the demos okay wow so you okay. just you guys just were kind of like we want to record an ep and then just kind of went to canada and we're like we're gonna win <laughs> this shit <laughs> kind of, why not uh we had what we thought was the full ep at the time uh and then we got to the studio and we like went through all the songs with our producer Corey, and uh we were it kind of just agreed that certain parts could be better and like i didn't we didn't have any leads for In the Open at the time, so like we worked on those while we were coming up with the scratches and everything. Okay. But normally we like to be more prepared than that. It was we were originally yeah. supposed to record a record in October of twenty nineteen. And then our two weeks before we were supposed to hit the studio, that producer uh completely bailed. Uh just like dropped off the radar, quit producing, like disappeared. Oh, oh okay. Uh, okay. So our yeah, our backup plan was just like, oh, then let's go with the guy we've wanted to go with the whole time and go to another <laughs> country to do this. Yeah, okay. uh, we we literally, uh, well, Mike and I, the two of us, like we work um, with two of the dudes from the band Anyone Anyway, and they were just constantly like, dude, you got to go to this producer, you got to do it. And it got mm -hmm. to a point where one of them was like, hey, listen, Evan, like, I'm sorry we keep pressuring you to work with Corey. And we were like, dude, keep doing it. <laughs> yeah, you're convincing like, us yeah mm -hmm. so it it worked out in the end thankfully also cory is um his name is cory bergeron uh he plays in the band locket um and then he also has a youtube channel called cory bergeron recordings so you should you know go watch go watch that hit, channel hit that smack that like hit button, that, subscribe smack that <laughs> mf subscribe button no. hit, yeah hit that notification yeah. bell raid so shadow true. legends raid shadow legends oh, promo. Of course. <laughs> all yeah everywhere all right uh can you tell me where your headspace was while creating this album very ep depressed. Oh. so depressed depressed <laughs> depressed Ouch. i would say stressed out but i'm not speaking for the band here but i, I uh, context clues yeah. i think i mentioned to evan uh, before we even went into the studio, that this was my screaming into the void record. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I do remember that. Yeah. So like, I purposefully just wrote without any like, oh, uh, this is too sad or melodramatic or depressing. I purposefully just kind of said, like, oh well, I just need to do that. 
and then get it out of my system and then be a little more positive on the next record. But and then musically, we wanted it to be the brightest we've ever been and the least yeah. aggressive. So like, I didn't scream at all on this record, whereas like half the last record was mostly screaming. So it's oh. like I, that was my headspace. I mean, Evan Evan wrote most of the guitar parts. So yeah, I think like I guess yeah, definitely lyrically, I would say the emotions like on the record were like really raw, especially because not only like you said, not only was it your screaming into the void record, but I think the anxiety that came along with being so underprepared sort of perpetuated that feeling. Um, yeah, I, I guess for me, like, since obviously I did, I focus on more of like guitar stuff. Uh, Mike and I had talked about how we really wanted to like push our songs to be like catchier and more memorable than like the stuff we did before. So like, obviously a lot of bands we listen to, they have these like super infectious choruses and like catchy vocal melodies and it's like those were the qualities that we sort of looked up to um so that's kind of like when we were writing it and all the instrumentals and stuff we just wanted like the structure to be really good everything to be catchy and like mike said like even though the lyrics were dark we wanted the music itself to sound like bright compared to our yeah. other stuff okay Mm. Uh, you guys keep on talking about this other stuff but the ep is only on spotify so where in the void is the rest of your work you can find the first record on bandcamp we kind of purged everything when the new record came out okay bandcamp is currently our void yeah but we made we made all of the old stuff that's not available on streaming services free now just because it's like it doesn't make any sense to charge for something that's the only place you can get it okay okay yeah that's fair uh so what band or artist influence do you think you can hear the most on this ep uh, I definitely think a big one that comes to mind for me is like Kayak Jones. Yeah, Kayak mm-hmm. Jones is a really big one. Yeah, they're actually a band I hadn't heard of until Mike had introduced me to them. They had like um that three track out. I think it's called Sort Out Your Head. Uh, yeah, Sort Out Your Head. Thank you. But um, so good. Yeah, it there was like I remember Mike showing them to me and being like, "Oh yeah, they're kind of like the like emo, the Wonder Years," and like it made total sense like that yeah. description of them because I yeah I definitely like hear that sound, but yeah we just really really liked how they definitely blend emo and pop punk into like a middle of the road kind of thing where it's not distinctly one or the other and you know obviously like I'm a huge fan of their vocalist and he had the catchy melodies uh, we were talking about and things like that so yeah the Kayak Jones was definitely a big one for this EP. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Jimmy World was also, I think, a big one for specifically the record features. Evan and I were, were and arguably still are obsessed with that album, uh, and we brought that into the studio for like our. This is what we want it to sound like, production wise, like mm-hmm. reference record. That was a big one. That and the Young Culture EP. This is Evan. It's also oh, really we cool. fucking so love true. Young Culture here. Young yeah. Culture is so good. Yeah. It's Alex, so good. So we nice actually guy. are guitar tones on the record are basically just uh cory hit up sam who produced uh the young culture records and was like what did you guys use for the young culture stuff and then we just tweaked it to be a little bit heavier for our sound and then we named it uh the tone setting was like what was it it was like fs man rock or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what like the to- like that's what it said in the file just fs man rock. fs man rock, man rock. I, was, I, was like, I don't know the context we, we just went with it yeah i think Corey just called i think Corey did that like, yeah did we accidentally just create a new genre we're yeah, man rock. Rock. familiar spaces this is a man rock band i gotta change your twitter bio <laughs> oh yes <laughs> um, so this one should go like super super fast off the top of your head, I want you guys to describe this EP for new listeners in three words. Each you have to do it. Yeah, each of you. All right. Oh, mm-hmm. man. Uh, let's make Jordan go first because he hasn't spoken yet. Jordan <laughs> uh, wasn't in the band when we did this record, so that's why he's been quiet the whole time. But I can still describe it, I guess. Um, I would say big and like uh, expansive, which is the same word as big. Big and expansive. Yeah. Okay. Well, I feel like big is like, you know, and then like expansive feels like kind of like wide. More like the expanding I mean? yeah. brain kind of image. That yeah, kind of exactly. Brain. Like big brain and then expansive brain. Okay. 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 That's fair. Interesting. I feel like big. I definitely agree. Big. You can't um, say big. I already said big. I, oh. can, can we no. not repeat them? Definitely not. 
Damn it. Well, I guess not. Uh, I mean, Jordan's making Shit, up the rules Jordan's now. Jordan's making yeah, new rules. I know. <laughs> Jordan's like, like sure, this is Jordan, my podcast. Jordan's, <laughs> taking, Jordan's taking over. It's Jordan Noy's podcast now. Um, yeah, yeah, you're say, the third member. I'm going to say huge. <laughs> okay. okay. Huge, um, bright, okay. and uh, colorful. Huh? Colorful. I like that one. Mm-hmm. I hear music in colors, so... Ooh. What color is this cool. album for you? Oh, super pink, super pink, pink and yeah, it's just the album artwork to me. Okay. Oh, that's um, really cool. So yeah, definitely colorful, huge Jordan, and uh, bright. Bright. I think my three would probably be energetic, hopeful, and distressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah that's pretty accurate. yeah <laughs> um so is there a certain feeling you want your listeners to have while going through the ep um i don't think i've ever thought about that that is a, a great question yeah Just, it's not something i've thought about directly hopefully they like it that's about as far as i've thought about that in the past okay um i uh, yeah, that's a tough one for me. I don't I'll know. spin the question on Jordan because he hasn't spoken much. Uh, yeah. Is there a certain feeling that you get while listening to it since you weren't involved in the actual creating process of it? That's a good question. And I listened to at least the first, I think, well, the one single, not like it used to be, has, had been out for a while, a previous recording of it, like way like before, way before I joined the band. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, yeah, that's the great thing is I was already a fan of this band and then they wanted me to join, which is, which is cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, yeah. I would, I think like, I think because the, there's this great contrast between the lyrics and the music, like they were describing is like, if you just like turn your brain off and listen, it's just like, Oh great. This is like cool, like alt rock. And then like you go and read through the, the lyrics and then they like actually make you like sit and think about like mental health and caring for your friends and like other, like much, you know, more like substantial like subjects. So I think it's like, you can engage it a, a couple of ways. And I like, I always like that about like their stuff and i think the ep falls into that too okay that was Very good cool yeah that's good all right I'm just gonna leave it at that yeah okay I'll cool just right. making sure. <laughs> <laughs> just making sure um so what made you choose in the open as the lead single for this ep because it beats ass <laughs> <laughs> that was the ass Simple. beater on the record <laughs> okay good choice I'm pretty sure it was just one. I think I think we had agreed it was going to be the first single from like the upgraded version, like not counting, not like it used to be the original version. I think we agreed on that in the studio. I think Corey was even part of that decision. I think so. Yeah, I think Corey, Corey had recommended it to us. And also, I guess her mindset was like, A, uh, as Jordan mentioned, there was already a previous version of Not Like It Used To Be out. So rather than that being the first single, we wanted like a fully new song that nobody had heard before. Mm-hmm. And, um, and yeah, we just, we just like, we were pretty confident in like the catchiness of it. And obviously Corey was, um, you know, like helped us kind of build that confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it just kind of felt right. If like it, like we listened to it after recording, it was like, this feels like a single, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. All right. That's good. Um, so what song on this EP took the longest to write and which one is your personal favorite? And Jordan, you can even answer which one is the personal favorite for you as well. Exactly. Title track definitely took the longest. Title track absolutely took the longest. Because not like it used to be was the first song we wrote for the record. But uh, the first draft was pretty much the version that people can hear now. Okay. Um, whereas the title track, I, we wrote the first version of it not too much longer after. Not like it used to be. But then it was finished in the studio two years later. So... Um, hmm. I would say that one took the longest for sure because it. We wrote the chorus in the studio, we wrote the intro in the studio. The bridge was written. No, the bridge wasn't written in the studio, but the bridge originally wasn't a bridge. I think. Oh. It's like there's like we like completely deconstructed and reconstructed that entire song in the studio. So that one definitely took the longest. Okay. Favorite was probably like in the open, or I like you a lot because I like the, um, I like how fat the drum sound when everything kicks in it mm-hmm. just it sounds thick as hell uh joey demers from uh heavy arts played on played all the drum parts on our record and oh. that dude is like scary good at the drums 
yeah. So it's like, cool to watch him track that. And I think that's why I like that song so much. It's just like him playing these little like fill things in the track, like actually watching him record it. It's just like mm-hmm. it's a good memory for me. Okay. Yeah. And then did everybody else say their favorites? Not everybody else did silent, Corey. Yeah. Um I I'm gonna say you as well for me because I love I I particularly love the vocal work in the first half of that song. I think we had we had definitely never done like harmonies uh really much at all honestly before this but like especially to that extent like Corey helped us a lot with the arrangement and um you know the the harmonies like in the first half of you when it's a lot softer um just like came out beautifully and i'm like really happy with the way it sounds and then just like mike said like we uh we used Corey's amp for like feedback from the soft to the loud section so like the feedback is just like super like chaotic and then the drums just sound insane when it starts but yeah i'm, I'm really happy the, with the way that song came out and also it's like it's really subtle so you might like it might not even be noticeable until you like know it but there's a little bit of piano in the second half like layered over a guitar lead and Ooh, i think cool. having that is was super cool okay very interesting mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think my favorite, even though I didn't make it, is ha- is happy enough. I think it's got my favorite mic vocals of any of them. Like that last, like biggest chorus. The song and, hurts. And say. it's just it's just in the range where if no one's listening and I'm alone with my car, I can hit all the melody notes. Whereas not all the songs, that's the case. Oh. No one, no one should hear that. But it is. Fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we need Jordan vocals on the next exactly. record. Exactly. <laughs> Jordan. Well, Jordan does Jordan does backing vocals in uh, what will be the live version of this band. Yeah, I, I do we actually play a show with the new record. Saying. We haven't played a show with the new record, so. All right, we're gonna get That's some exciting. Jordan vocals. Can't wait. <laughs> um, so, where do you guys see the band in the next five years? Are you working on any new projects? Uh, incredibly wealthy. Oh, um, obviously, insanely That's high profile been. record label. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> absolutely gonna have like uh like a travis scott feature oh and probably something like that i don't know <laughs> i'd love to see that uh, <laughs> a mcdonald's signature meal obviously yes uh, yeah. 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 it's just it's just 40 mcnuggets in a bag <laughs> oh my god do, do they just sprinkle some fries in there too <laughs> they they just put open things of barbecue sauce into the bag with it, Aww. so it's already all over the night. That's horrifying. <laughs> That's fucking gross. <laughs> <nice. laughs> it's just like the saddest meal you've ever seen. It's like it's like ten dollars. <laughs> you can only order it after midnight. Only between midnight and three a.m. To get that maximum feel, <laughs> you have yeah, to. Sure, they have to sure. believe that you're going through some shit to even like sell it to you. Like yeah, you, you have, have to, to tell prove your life story. Exactly. <laughs> they have to look through your drafts on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, you don't actually order it at the menu. You pull up and they're like, "What can I get started for you today?" And you're just like, <sighs> "Yeah, I got you." Yeah, <laughs> you start right. venting to the employee the and like, meal. <laughs> <laughs> "Okay." Um, so that that's the upcoming project then too. You guys are in the works yeah. with McDonald's on that. Yeah, meal. we're working with McDonald's. We are working on new music though, actually. Okay. okay. Um, but we're very early in. Like there's only like one song that we've really have like quote done. Okay. Okay. So it'll be think like. Oh, sorry. What were you gonna say, Mike? Oh, I was just gonna say there there will be new music in 21. We just don't know when. Mm. Okay. Sure. I was gonna say um obviously it's like. I think it's definitely hard to tell with the pandemic, of course, but I think in the next five years, like assuming hopefully relatively soon, uh, like shows come back, I definitely, uh, I definitely hope that we get the opportunity to like um, play with some national touring acts. Like even if it's just an opening slot, I think that's something we've like wanted to do for a while. And it was, it was sort of like a goal that we kind of set for ourselves before the pandemic and then shows just stopped happening. And we were like, Oh man, like, damn it oh man <laughs> yeah exactly. yeah it's a huge bummer but yeah when i definitely like hope that when shows come back we can kind of get some the ball rolling more and it would it would just be super cool to like open for a band that we look up to mm-hmm. oh yeah all right yeah i think too like in the world of like diy 
like being unsigned, like it's pretty tough to plan far in the future just mm -hmm. because like we have so little control over like reception or like who might hear it or like who picks it up or not or like, you know, like all that stuff is, is so hard to control. So I think like, I feel like we're more in the mindset of just like, we're just going to write a bunch of music for the next like six, eight, 12 months and just like see what we can make of it. But yeah, I think it's it's hard to like have bigger goals just because like if there's you have so little control. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting you say that because, like, we interview mostly DIY artists, and I feel like a lot of them think that they have more control over their music than, like, less control. Where we went dark. I think this dark. year proved that. I feel like 2020 proved that. Yeah. Absolutely mm -hmm. nothing is in our control, like, 90% of the time. It's just, like, you you have your plan. You just got to hope that your plan can actually happen. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so for the last couple of questions, we're actually going to shift away from music and go straight to death row. So, oh yeah, what is that? <laughs> so if you're on death row, what would your last meal be with a drink? Uh, the fam space meal at McDonald's, the, the 40 piece, <laughs> <laughs> the 40 piece McNugget. Yeah. Somebody, somebody needs to make like a really bad Photoshop of what the fam space meal would look like. Or but, just order 40 nuggets. And just yeah. take a picture of it and then tweet exactly. it at us and we'll retweet it. Just like exactly. scotch, scotch tape the EP artwork onto the <laughs> bag. Tape a CD no. to it. <laughs> scotch tape? <laughs> Oh my God. everybody in search of carbohydrates <laughs> yeah i think for for last meal and drink my my favorite food by like a landslide is sushi so Ooh. i definitely definitely for my last meal uh i would just have a ton of like spicy tuna rolls just like as much sushi as i as i could i guess because yeah. it's like i'm gonna die might as well go on a bang and then i don't know like for a like, I'm trying to think of, like, my favorite drink. Because, like, I love coffee, but coffee mm -hmm. and sushi would be so weird. Like, oh, oh, yeah, that wouldn't, that, that wouldn't would be good. Work. Yeah, that'd be Horrible. disgusting. Instead, um, instead of soy sauce, it's like espresso. And you oh, don't. <laughs> don't. Yeah. Don't. <laughs> yeah uh -huh. um, wow. I don't know. Yeah, I guess I, I would say coffee, but since it would go horribly with sushi, just, like, a nicely flavored seltzer, like a nice lime sparkling water. So something that's like the that. most familiar spaces drink order I have ever heard. Like uh, a nice seltzer, like, wow. seltzer, please. Literally, just one of these. <gasps> that yeah. Oh my god, Dude, yo, that's my favorite flats. brand. Yeah, yeah. yeah. no, it oh, yeah. actually flats. is like the best, the best sparkling water. Yes, so by far, I agree. I agree. Final meal. Yeah. Yeah, Mike. Do you have a drink uh, for those forty nuggets in a bag? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I didn't know that was gonna. Yeah, I was like, sticking with that. It's locked I mean, in. You can. It's up to you. Like, do they my pour a drink was, in the bag with it? My plan was to, it like up? get a. My plan was just like make them get like as like an uh, like a ridiculously high amount of like pan pizzas, uh -huh. and then I'm gonna eat pizza until I want to die. Oh, so yeah. that it's like it just That's ties a good into idea. The fact that I'm yeah, gonna you, die. You exactly. It's almost actual death. Forty like eighth yeah. slice yeah. in. I'm like, I'm ready for ascension. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's almost like it's your choice. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. I they, want it to happen. Yeah. I would die the most delicious death. Exactly. Yeah. That sounds great. They electric chair you, and you just start vibrating pizza out of all of your pores. <laughs> 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 this is disgusting. It's just like. <laughs> I'm just screaming pan pizza while I'm going out. Aww. Okay. But what, pan pizza. what drink are you washing this pan pizza down with? Yeah. I'm honestly, I'm going to stick with the look. I'm going to stick with the uh, seltzer theme. Okay. Uh, I've been vibing off of uh, coconut LaCroix lately. Coconut. Coconut. I, I like, I'm very picky with coconut because I don't like when it's overly sweet. When it's like mm -hmm. a mild coconut flavor, it's just yeah. like chef's kiss. I love that shit for some reason. So I've been, I've been vibing off the, the yeah, and, you know, I've been vibing off that coconut LaCroix. So I'd probably do that. I need to taste that coconut it's, LaCroix. It's I didn't good, know that was a thing. Surprisingly good shit from someone who doesn't usually like LaCroix or not LaCroix. I love LaCroix, but um, coconut. Coconut. coconut, yeah, coconut flavoring. Like it's, it's surprisingly good. Okay. Solid. I'm very curious to hear Jordan's answer. Yeah. I don't think here. mine is actually like the most delicious option, but before like our state's lockdown, we all like we all made fried rice at Evan's house. Yeah. Like it was like like in culinary terms, like extremely mm -hmm. average. 
but because <laughs> just of the, the, the happiness of like cooking with your friends, which is a thing I haven't done in forever, for the yeah. nostalgia of that, I think I would just eat that. But it has to be prepared by us three. It can't just be yeah. like red rice. That, that really actually so is wholesome. like such a wholesome answer. I love that. We live yeah. stream it too. <laughs> from live from, stream it. Oh, from like extremely ordinary cooking. <laughs> But but from a friendship perspective, yeah. it was mm. off the charts. I don't know, man. Like, I might be. I'm pretty easy to satisfy on food. That's why I'm as big as I am. But I felt like that fried rice kind of hit different. That was some good mm -hmm. rice. I wow. will say, since then, during the pandemic, my oldest brother got a rice cooker, which means that since I live with him, I got a rice cooker. Mm -hmm. uh, so I've dealt. I think my rice has improved since. But unfortunately, the three of us have not been able to uh, make it together again. Oh. Well, when the other than so you got to find out if that rice exactly. is improved. Other than Evan and I working together because we both work at Starbucks, mm -hmm. um, we haven't met as a band in like what was it like it was before Thanksgiving, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah it's been wow. a little. Bit, it's been a minute. Yeah, and... I think it's the longest we've gone without seeing each other actually. Oh, yeah, I, since I really... since Jordan joined, it's gonna really be like a family reunion. Really... It's gonna be insane. We're all just gonna start crying in the middle of the podcast <laughs> right now. <laughs> We're gonna do the we're gonna do the full SpongeBob like that song when SpongeBob this works for the jump bucket. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that one. Jordan's not gonna know what's going on because he's never That's on right. TV. <laughs> do you have a drink to go with the fried rice? Oh, good. Oh man. Um, okay, I would eat the dinner of fried rice, and then of like course. like after dinner, like right before my execution, I would order mm -hmm. like you know what a shot ski is at like a ski lodge. It's like they line up like shots of alcohol, and like everybody takes them like on a ski. Yeah, it would be that, but except it'd be all shots of espresso, and I'd be the only one who takes them. And then I would oh just get this insane, it's like caffeine rush right before my death, just to go out like with a bang. I feel like that'd be the way to do it. This is like, oh my that's, god, that was that's like horrifying. Very, that was very well thought out. Like, yeah, dude, you're gonna be wired before you get yeah. wired. Like, oh my god. <laughs> oh my okay. god. Wow, well, interesting choice. Uh, I feel so... like the espresso might keep you alive. To be honest, right? Like, I might yeah. die. Like, I'm too hyped to die. <laughs> <laughs> Indestructible. Oh my god. All right. Well, if you guys could live in one fictional world for a week. Where would you live? I wish I had thought about this before. I feel like that's such a cool question. Most of my favorite yeah. media is like, there's too much violence in this media for me to <laughs> yeah. feel yeah. comfortable with it there. I've been, I've been like, watching a lot of like crime dramas slash murder oh, so it's like, Yeah, don't you don't want to go, go there. No. At all. Um, like, a fictional world that I'd want to be in. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Uh, I've always thought it would be cool to live somewhere like like in like the world of like Family Guy because people can fucking die and then just come back in the next episode. Yeah. It's like I would not I would not be worried about a thing. Like mm -hmm. I could realistically die right now and then I just be pop up in the next episode in the background of a scene and I'd be fine. Exactly. So I mean, and we also live like twenty minutes away from where that's supposed to like take place. Yes, you do. Oh. Yeah, but actually, my friends and I went to Spooner Street. It doesn't obviously it looks nothing like it because they made up the entirety of the city. But there yeah. is a Spooner Street nearby, and I went there in like high school. Okay, that's okay. cool. I think mine would probably be uh, the like really weird ice cream world from Shark Boy and Lava Girl. <laughs> oh my god! I would, I would definitely just go there and just drink all the ice cream and swim around and like... Why do we talk out. about... Shark Boy and Lava Girl enters every conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, it is it is in my head constantly. As it should be. Yeah. Frontal lobe, dude. Master Shark Boy and Lava Girl right here. Mm -hmm. I sleep to the to the dream song. Oh, that's so <laughs> Taylor <bad. Lawrence. laughs> dream, 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 dream. Oh man, I'm gonna put that somewhere in a textural part of a song one day. Please, people are gonna know. I'm gonna put it so you can't hear it, but I know mm -hmm. it's there. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's a little Easter egg. <laughs> okay, my memory is hazy on this one because it's been a long time. But they're in Spy Kids 3D. You know, remember that movie? Yes. Yeah. Like, I think there's like this like race scene. Like they all race like in space. Yeah. Or something, on mm -hmm. these like weird like light. Lanes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah it was like that, Mario that would there. Yeah, that. That would be sick. But like, don't wow. people like die in those races? Yeah, they do. Jordan, Jordan you are. You have, die, Jordan, yeah. you have so much confidence in your racing skills. Hundred <laughs> percent. 
Oh my god! And you have to survive on that for a week. So, yep. okay. I think Good you can luck. do it. Yeah. yeah. You, sound, you sound so confident. Like I'm like, wow. <laughs> You're like, uh, yeah, a week, fine, whatever. <laughs> easy. Uh, so I have the honor of asking the last question, and every single person we've spoken to have said the most important question. What's your favorite color? Oh shit! See, mm -hmm. blue. I don't mind. Blue, okay. Blue, blue's like Miners, recurrent. It's red, like bright, like fluorescent. It kind of comes through as orange because yeah, orange. I was about to say yeah. no, that's orange. <laughs> I promise, in real life, it's red. <laughs> okay. it's bright red. Okay, bright red. Bright red. I think, <clears throat> I think my favorite color would would be like a dark forest green because i for Ooh. some reason i just find that color like really comforting i don't know why it just like, it feels like really that comforting. like uh like jordan's shirt Did you just look at me and pick yeah, what jordan, i'm wearing evan jordan's shirt yeah <laughs> he just starts like describing you and he's like that's my favorite <laughs> color <laughs> hint of a mustache yeah, my, my favorite color would probably be like six two plays <laughs> <laughs> all right <laughs> yeah, interesting <laughs> um well as i said that's all the questions we have today is there anything that you would like to plug uh what was that thing we said in the past evan that the last time we did an interview it's like right fat riffs Oh and yeah, like the, the motto. Dude, it's been a long time since we've done it. I'm not sure. Well, right fat riffs will remain. Um stream uh everyone to search from an exit on Spotify or Apple Music or Title or uh Google Play. Is that is that the name of the Google streaming yeah, service? Google yeah, it's something like that. Um, or YouTube mm -hmm. music, I think we're on that. Um or our uh geezer or mm -hmm. something like that. Or, uh, Groove Shark. Maybe Groove Shark. Not. If you oh, have you're on everything. You know what? Actually, LimeWire. Like, yeah, download it on LimeWire. Download Wire. that shit off LimeWire. Give your computer cool all it. of the viruses. Na Napster. 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 <laughs> um, uh, go to your go to your uh crush or just ho your homie's house with a boombox and play a record <laughs> right outside. Your oh wow. Um, what else? What else are we on? Uh. uh I don't know. I, I can't. I, I honestly, there's more streaming services than I had any idea of. Mode. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I gotta go to CD Baby after this and see how many streaming services we're on. <laughs> uh, well, thank you for sitting out with us, guys. It's been Familiar Spaces and We're the Good Noise podcast. <laughs>